Welcome back to the YouTube channel, guys. This is Josh from EverydayFBA.com, and today we're talking about Scout IQ and Scout IQ triggers. I'm going to show you my complete Scout IQ trigger setup for 2020 because I'm doing things a little bit differently going forward. I really want to streamline my Amazon business, my media sourcing in order to produce me more profit with less effort. That is the name of the game for 2020 because I want to get in to other avenues. So I really have to kind of fine tune my Amazon business. And this is how I'm going to do it by starting with what I am sourcing, what I'm actually taking in and what I'm spending my time doing and prepping and shipping and all that good stuff. I'm doing this because, like I said, I want to get into other avenues, but I also want to start looking at wholesale for Amazon FBA. We're going to be getting into that a little bit more as this month goes on. I'm going to be talking about wholesale. I'm going to be trying to start uh, getting involved in that game. And of course, I'm going to show you guys all that complete process, but it has to start right here by streamlining my Amazon FBA business. Let's dig in to my brand new triggers. You guys are gonna see me create these triggers right here before your very own eyes. Let's do it. All right, guys, if you are not familiar with Scout IQ, please go ahead and get familiar. There's a link in the description that you can get a 14 day trial and you can try it out for yourself to see if it helps you source better. I highly recommend it. I've been down with it since it first came out. And the things that I've learned, not only from Scout IQ and from Caleb Roth and his team, have helped me expand my business. Okay, so go ahead, Scout IQ, check it out if you don't know what it is. But inside your Scout IQ account, you can start creating custom triggers it has the defaults here but what we're going to do is we're going to create a whole brand new set and tailor it to our specific needs i've already deleted my older triggers because i'm not going to be using those anymore so let's go ahead and i'll show you how to set up custom triggers we're just going to hit new right here and we're going to add to the description so you can kind of name this whatever you like if it's your default you can put default if it's a general if it's tailored for book cd dvd whatever you want you need to put it in this description because it's going to help you identify those triggers in the app. So I'm just going to put, I don't know, it can be anything. I'm going to put use this. All right, that's what I'm going to do. Fulfillment FBA for sure buy cost. If you don't know what your average buy cost is, go ahead and get familiar with it. Mine is about 250, so I put that in there. Cost per pound, 25 cents is usual about for media, but sometimes it can be a little bit higher. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in 40 cents just to have a little bit of a buffer zone right there for that cost to ship that stuff into Amazon. We'll save the trigger set right now. And now you have the option to go ahead and start inputting things and creating new triggers. A trick that I want to show you though, guys, is to go ahead, instead of going here line by line and creating new triggers specifically for you, I like to go based off the defaults and then tailor them uh, for myself. So just hit restore to defaults. Yes, overwrite my triggers. And it's going to put those default Scout IQ trigger settings into this new uh, set of triggers that you just created. Okay, right here, use this. Let's edit this now. So you can see that it's imported all those defaults from Scout IQ. I'm not really going to use all of these settings. I'm going to go through here and start deleting because I don't think that I'm going to need 12 different triggers. Uh, so the plan here is to really streamline my efforts. So I'm going to be looking for higher profits. I'm going to be looking for lower ranks. And uh, the way we're going to do that, uh, we probably only need maybe three or at the most four different kinds of triggers to really get it going. So now you may be like, well, why did you just, you know, import all the defaults in? Why didn't you just go and create, you know, three or four line by line? It's really just because I like to have a base. I like to see these numbers already in and I'm kind of lazy. I don't want to have to edit so much. And when you're doing them, you're creating your triggers, you know, on your own line by line. You have to go through here and import every or input every single number and change all these by hand. To me, you know, it's just easier to uh, do it this way and import the defaults. Uh, but like I said, I am gonna delete some of these. So like probably these two for sure, these bottom three, I'm gonna delete. I'm not gonna be looking for ranks over 3 million, that's for sure. And then what we're gonna do from here is really just consolidate these triggers until into uh, three or four kind of umbrella triggers. 
So a quick word about triggers, everyone. Triggers are meant to help you kind of, I don't know, for me, they help me kind of go a little bit faster when I'm processing through books, CDs, DVDs. I can really just hit them and look and listen for that audio cue and pull that item off the shelf. And then when I'm done with pulling and scanning all items, then I go through and I review the data manually by looking at the screen and making sure the numbers make sense for me. So don't just rely on triggers 100% to pull your accepts or, or tell you what to reject because triggers are only going to do what you tell them. They're very specific. So they might leave good profitable books behind and they might give you uh, rejects as accepts. So you really do need to review the data for yourself. Don't just rely on triggers, but I'm going to set my triggers up in a tiered way. So I'm going to start with trigger number one, looking up, looking at ranks up to 500,000. Trigger two is going to look up to ranks for about 1 million. Trigger uh, three will go up to 2 million. And then trigger four will take in account to anything above 2 million up to 3 million is going to be my cap. Trigger settings are different for everyone. I play with my trigger settings all the time. So try to find something that works for you. No one has like the secret trigger settings that's going to help you make, uh, you know, a million dollars quickly on Amazon. Okay, so just play with it as you go through and you're sourcing and you're scanning and you're selling books and media on Amazon. You're going to come up with what works best for you. So go ahead and do that. Don't just copy my exact settings, although you can and they will work. You just know you might be missing out on uh, other things that you would only know from your experience with your Amazon business. All right, let's start some editing, man. Bear with me as I try to explain what I'm doing here. And if you have questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments. So like I said, the first tier that I'm going to have is going to go up to a max rank of 500,000. So what we want to do is change some of these numbers, right? So as far as e-score goes, the minimum e-score, we're going to keep that the same but max e-score, we want to push that all the way up just like it has here, 9,000, if it's possible to do that. Let me see, 9,000. Oh, it changes to 180. So 180 is really as high as you can go as far as e-score. So if you don't know, e-score is the amount of times a book sells or something sells in six months. So if you have an e-score of 180, which is pretty much the max, divide that by six months and you'll get an estimate for how many sales that item is doing every single month hopefully i explain that well enough minimum rank we're going to drop down to one as well because we want to see everything from the very lowest rank to a max of five hundred thousand. now for the fba slot i think that i want to look at i don't know this one's kind of hard okay so the fba slot is the offer that scout iq will calculate the profit off of so depending on where you put this you may have more accepts or you may have less accepts uh, slot number three is not crazy at all it's the third lowest offer still good eligibility for the buy box you don't always have to be the lowest offer to get the buy box but if i want to make sure that i'm able to sell this product at the lowest fba offer and turn a profit then i want to look at number one fba slot number one which is what i think i'm gonna do for this u slot i'm gonna go for the highest i'm gonna keep that the same because this is dealing with the uh, merchant fulfilled offers most of the time and i don't really care about merchant fulfilled offers because i'm an fba seller buy box compare i do want to do 10 percent off amazon i'm fine target profit 250 that's kind of low for me uh, i usually don't accept anything less than at the minimum four dollars i really like to try for five but if it's something that sells faster i'll go for four for this i think i'm gonna have to stick it out and just keep five because i don't really want to be touching books that aren't going to be making me a lot of profit and again we're looking at fba slot one i want to know that i can sell that product at the lowest price and make five dollars profit in order to buy a book to touch it to prep it and to ship it in that is my parameters for this trigger. So this is going to be trigger number one. All right, now that I got that one set up, I can go ahead and delete these others above it because I won't be using those. Now we can start to edit this one. So the 500,000 is the max rank here, 500,000 here. I'm just going to change this to 500,001. Is that right? Does that look right? Yeah, all right. 500,001 up to 900,000. I'm going to go ahead and turn this into 1 million. So now we're looking at 
500,001 in minimum rank up to a max rank of 1 million. The E scores, we can keep the same because they still look pretty good. This is the minimum we can accept. This is the maximum we're going to accept. So again, we'll go over to the FBA slot and we'll change this to one because I still want to look at the lowest FBA offer possible. Don't care about you slot. So we'll keep it at the highest. Buy boss compare. Yes. 10% again. And now we have to figure out the target profit. Now under 1 million in rank is not a bad rank. A lot of people stay under those ranks and don't go any higher. I definitely do go higher. Although, like I said, I'm going to streamline a little bit. So we have to figure out what kind of target profit we want on books ranked 500,000 up to 1 million. We already have this target profit here of $5 for ranks under 500,000. You know, could we go six, seven, eight, ten? 10? I mean, it just depends. Guys, whatever you set your target profit at, whatever you set these numbers at, Scott IQ is going to reject or accept. Okay, so you have to kind of be careful with them. And uh, like I said, keep continuously fine tuning them for what you want. My target profit for this, I'm not going to go too much higher. Definitely want to add more than a dollar, but not too much. So I'm just going to go ahead and put seven dollars in profit. So now for ranks from 500,000 to 1 million, I want to see at least seven dollars in profit. These are books that may sit around for a little while longer. They may get uh, more competition. Prices start to drop. So I want to have a healthy profit margin in that item in case I have to lower my price, in case I have to compete or in case it just simply does not sell and just collects fees. All right, so moving right along, we're going to keep these same E scores here, but we do want to change this to 1 million and 1. So we'll be looking at ranks above 1 million, and we'll put 1.5 million here. So now we're looking at ranks from 1 million to 1.5 million FBA slot. I'm still confident to go ahead and look at 1. Uh, on the next trigger, we'll go ahead and skip the FBA offer, but right now we'll go ahead and we'll keep looking at one. Again, 1.5 million is not an incredibly high rank. It's still a item that you can sell relatively quickly. Use slot is looking at the 10th. I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, I'm okay with that. I, I kind of would want to drop this down to five. I guess I will. So I'll be looking at the fifth. Uh, used offer, which is typically, like I said, a merchant fulfilled offer. So it's going to look at FBA slot number one for profit. If there is no FBA offer, it'll move to the fifth offer, the fifth merchant fulfilled offer. Buy box compare. Yes, we'll still do that. Uh, this next one again, we'll change that, but 10% off Amazon. Yes. Target profit. Now, where do we come in again? We want to slowly increase it. I don't want to go too high because I don't want to leave, uh, a lot of books on the shelf, but I don't want to go too low because I do want there to be some increase in profit. So maybe I'll just go ahead and bump it up. Uh, I don't know, another $2, or maybe just round it off to an even 10. So books over 1 million, I guess I want to look for profit of $10 at the very least. It might be a little bit high, but again, like I said, what I'm trying to do is streamline my efforts to reduce the amount of inventory that I'm actually taking in and to try and increase the quality of the inventory that I am taking in. So I'm looking for, again, for lower ranks, higher profits. That is what it's all about. So we can go through here and change our last trigger. We're going to be looking at 1500. I'm sorry, uh, 15, <laughs> 1.5 million and one. And you know what? I think I'm going to go up to 300 or 3 million for this. Okay. 3 million. Again, it's not out of the ordinary. It's not extraordinary. It's not crazy. You can still sell books up to 3 million rank, even higher. I'm just not going to go after those higher ones. So this is where, again, it starts to get a little tricky. We don't really want to look at the FBA slot. So I'm going to skip that. And then for the U slot, I'm going to look at the merchant fulfilled offer number five, because I'm starting to get into a little bit of higher ranks. Although, like I said, it's not too crazy. Buy box compared. Yes, I still want to do that. 10% off Amazon, but target profit here. Let's go ahead and jump it up just a bit. Let's go put $15 right here just to make it interesting. You know, these books may sit into inventory just a little bit more. If you see minimum e-score is six. That means this book sells only once a month. So if I'm only going to have one opportunity to sell every single month, I want to make sure that there's some good high profit in this. And I'm skipping the FBA offer slot because once you start getting into the higher ranks, you have to start taking into account merchant fulfilled offers and what their prices are. The less opportunities you have to sell a book, 
the less um, demand that book has, the more you have to pay attention to merchant fulfilled offers. So this is it, guys. I'm going to hit save my trigger settings. It's going to do that for me. Now you got it. One, two, three, four. This is going to be my starting book triggers for 2020. I will definitely go through and fine tune these as I go forward. Maybe I'll increase the profit or decrease the profit, you know, depending on how many books and uh, DVDs and CDs and video games I'm finding. I'm going to go through here and do all of these. I would do them right here for you live, but I'm sure this video would end up to be an hour long. So I'll make another video about the DVD triggers, about the music triggers, and about the video game triggers. I'm not really paying attention to VHS, so I'm not going to do that. But I'll get some more videos done on these other triggers. But you can imagine that it's going to be tiered this kind of same way. The ranks will be a little different. The target profit might be a little bit different. But the FBA offers I'm looking at, the merchant fulfilled offer I'm looking at, the buy box compare, the percent off Amazon, that's not going to change in DVDs or music or video games. The only thing that's going to change is the ranks and the e-score and how that uh, plays out. So this is what I'm rolling with. Uh, like I said, triggers... Triggers are like, they're, they're intimate, man. They're <laughs> only you can set up your custom triggers and only you know why you're doing it the way you're doing it. And everyone has a different business model and different things that they're looking for. So don't let really anyone tell you how to set up your triggers. You need to go out there and find out how to do it yourself. There is no one right answer. My trigger settings that you see right here before your eyes, they're going to leave a lot of books on the shelf. A book that is ranked under 500 million that makes me a target profit. A target profit comes back of $4.99. That's going to be a reject. Okay. Scott IQ is going to look at the data and it's going to reject it because of one single penny. That is the hazards of using triggers. So usually I would recommend to set these very loosely so that you're able to capture any kind of possible profit possible then go back and look at the data yourself and make that final decision but what i want to do like i said is really streamline what i am doing i'm going to roll with this see how it works i'll definitely report back to you guys in uh, future videos and to show you the adjustments that i have made but that is basically setting up triggers custom triggers in scout iq if you're ready to get that 14 day trial to scout iq go ahead and hit that link in the description sign up and if you do do that let me know send me an email at hi at everyday fba and i'll be sure to uh, offer my assistance in helping you get it set up or answering any questions that you have about it my name is josh everydayfba.com is my website scout iq is my preferred sourcing app Get that link in the description. Go ahead and grab it. I'll catch you guys on that next video.